Hello everyone, True Zero Emissions here. Free energy for everyone. Okay, question. This is from a bicycle light generator. Remember these? They go on the wheels. Yeah, remember those? Isn't that neat? This is a Bell, B-E-L-L. -L. That's who makes this one. That's what it said on the box. This is plastic, but it seems very high quality. It has four north poles and four south poles, and it says north, south, north, south, north, south. And I learned that from my polarity tester right here that I purchased on Amazon, right? It tests, it tests the polarity of the magnets, okay? I may be able to show you if I could do this with one hand. No, I don't think I can. Um, I thought I could press this button and push that, but what I will do is this. Uh, what I mean is I thought I could press this button and spin the wheel, but I cannot do that. So if I go around, see? See how it's going north, south, north, south, north, south. So it does, there's four souths and four norths, and they enter, they go back and forth. North, south, north, south, north, south. Okay, now, this is not made to charge a battery. This was made to power a light. What's interesting is, what happens if we charge a battery with it? That's what I want to do as an experiment. And I'm calling it free energy for everyone because that's what the imagination is. The imagination is a free energy over unity system. And it's inspired by the breath of life itself. So let's see what we have here. Does this look interesting to you? Think of this as a generator, right? We're gonna, this is an energy pump. All generators are energy pumps, okay? An alternator is an energy pump. All generators are energy pumps. They pump the energy from the environment into the circuits, right? Um, think of the heavy side component, right? Think of Thomas Bearden. Think of dark energy. Think of dark matter. Uh, we all know there's energy that we can't, we just say we don't know what it is or what it, where it comes from, right? We, we, all science accepts that. All science says, yeah, there's dark energy, there's dark matter. We don't know what it is, we don't. But, but then someone will say, but we know we don't use it. We know we don't use it. Some, some people will say that. But how is the universe uses it? We know that. We know the universe uses it. And we are the universe. <laughs> See, what I notice is things get compartmentalized. We, com we separate things and put them in little boxes and say, don't interact with each other. So we have all these different theories and we don't put them together, right? Well, that's not the way I was trained. That's not my conditioning. I was taught to network. I was taught to work with others. I was taught to see things from different perspectives. I was taught, do not just study electrodynamics. Also study particle physics. Also study all the other sciences, all the other arts, all the other poetry, philosophy, everything. An understanding of anything enriches all other understandings, right? An understanding of any art enriches understanding and appreciation of all the other arts, right? So <clears throat> let's talk about this right here what's unique about this as a generator let's think about this as a gen i'll just use the word generator i'll use that word that's fine okay i'll use that word so if i say energy pump who's going to know what that is right but i think ac it's more accurate to call it an energy pump but if the popular or unpopular word is to call it a generator we can call it that for now so let's say this this makes a light work when this spins right when this spins when this touches a wheel right and it spins and i did a test i had this touching the scooter wheel I don't remember what speed the scooter was going. Um, <clears throat> let me think. It might have been going about uh, 30 miles per hour, approximately, on the speedometer. And this was giving out 32 volts. And it's rated for, because on a bicycle, we wouldn't necessarily be going that fast, right? Um, this is rated for 6 volts at 3 watts. That's what it says. But I'm not looking at the power. What I'm looking at is what is the configuration? This is what I've learned, okay, in my research and study. It's not about how much power something makes. It's not about how many watts and amps that something makes, right? Because our meters can't read a pulse, right? And every pulse has current in it. Every pulse <clears throat> has current first before it has volts, okay? So... <clears throat> So um, that's important to note. Can okay, my research and study indicate that as an absolute fact? So uh, 
because that's based on testing okay this is based on testing and research together so right here we have a coil in there i don't know what gauge wire that is it looks like a pretty good size gauge wire actually that does not look real thin i should be able to measure that let's see if we can measure that i'm just going to show you what this says because i think the battery's dead in this Okay, so I don't know what these units are. Let's see. I guess it would be inches and millimeters, if, according to this. Uh, let's see if it says anywhere on here. Yeah, so the bottom is in millimeters, the top's in inches. Okay, so let's see what this. if we can get a, a measurement on this wire. It's just the wire that came. This hasn't been changed at all. This is just the wire that came with this. So I'm closing it. And let's see if we can get a number on there. If I can get the phone to focus here. Uh, let me back it away a little bit just to see what's there. It looks like it's, it's half or one third of a millimeter <clears throat> whatever that would be whatever that measurement is right half or one third of a millimeter I don't know uh, what measurement that is anyway because because wire comes in gauges right we think of wire as, as a gauge so I don't know what gauge that would be but maybe you could reference that maybe someone could calculate that anyway this is, hasn't been modified um, I am interested in in making a larger version of this or also seeing if so if there's a if there's some kind of generator that already exists that's larger than this okay and i'm also interested in testing this too because if we look at the r walker uh i can't think of the full name of the video at the moment i'll i'll put a link to it in this description look in the description of this video and i'll put a link to the r walker uh free energy self-charging auto sustainability scooter that some kids made some some students made um uh years ago a few years ago <clears throat> that was called a collaboration with teachers okay they made something that looks like the size of my fist right approximately that's about that size and i wonder if it inside there has something like this some variation of this right which i think of as uh words that come to mind as impulse technology where it creates that strong pulse what's happening though okay i don't know that for certain but that's just what i come to my imagination what's happening let's let's look at what's happening here what this is doing i'm gonna i'm gonna put some why words in front of my sentences right now okay i'm gonna put some the word why in front of my sentences right now do you see these four pieces of metal right here that go that go down right these four pieces of metal that go all the way down right so when the north hits this, this one, which is to hit this side of the coil, and the, let's see, it hits this side of the coil, oh, this side. So this, it hits this and this. I'm just saying it that way. I don't know if, you know, I'm just noticing it, it passes the top of the coil. Not very close though, right? Not very close, but it passes the top of the coil and it passes this side of the coil. And then this other metal piece, right? This side, the opposite, next to it, right? It's next to it. See these pieces? This one and this one that my thumb's on? That's the, uh, there's four of those, right? And that's these on the inside, right? That piece of metal, which is these two and these two, right? They're, they all go on this side. They go on here. So they're, that polarity, I'll call it, that polarity is, is, polarizing that coil on this side right and the inside because it goes inside see it goes inside there there's nothing in there i mean there's metal in there but there's no rotor in there see and if you look at this the rotor does not come through it does not go into this area it stops and i've seen that before in other designs um other generator designs very efficient ones so so what do we have 
we have on this side, let's say the north poles of this rotor, right? I tried to take this apart, but I didn't want to break this and it wasn't coming out easily. It might be glued on there. But I tried to take this rotor. Oh no, I'm saying, okay, yeah, I tried to get out. What am I trying to say right now? I, this rotor, when this rotor's inside here, when it, because this goes inside there, right? It goes, this goes inside and the rotor spins inside this. It spins inside here, like this. So when it's spinning, when it's spinning, the north will be touching all the four, four north, north poles. You can think of north and south as plus and minus, and I don't recall at the moment which one's plus and which one's minus. But that's a plus and a minus, okay? And it's a north and a south, right? North and south, plus and minus. And what did Donald Lee Smith say? What did Don Smith say, right? This book right here. The Don Smith Magnetic Resonance Energy Crafting Systematic Index Book. What did, what did he say? He said there is no plus and minus. There's just minus and more minus. And when the energy, and I'm, this is a paraphrase, I'm using my own thoughts right now, when, when, the, when the greater minus is trying to equalize with the lower minus, when they're trying to meet in the middle, that, that work, that's when work is done, when they're trying to equalize, right? So let's, let's uh, look at this again. So we have, the, let's say the north poles, all four north poles are touching these north poles, right? That means the south poles will be touching the, op the opposite side. When it rotates, that switches. The norths all become south, and the souths all become north. So what's happening? We're pulsing one side of the coil with positive and the other side with negative, and then we're switching it, and we're switching it, and we're switching it back and forth. So this is getting switched. This coil is getting, I'll say, pulsed with positive, negative, and then positive, negative, and then positive, negative, back and forth, back and forth, very, very fast. And that's what's giving us our voltage, okay? And that voltage, okay, and we know that all voltage has current. It has current in it, okay? We can't always measure it with a meter. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. Usually with systems with, uh, like, when we're looking at John Bedini's work and Tom Bearden's work, and I think uh, maybe even Don, Don Smith's work, I don't know if an amp meter is going to give us an accurate reading because we're in high frequency, right? Now, there is current, though. The pulses have current, so that's important to note. So if someone says, where's the energy? How do we measure the energy going into something? Here's the thing. Is the thing, is it acting as a range extender or not? Most people, I think, they'll be happy if their scooter can go further, right? So if you can go 50 miles, and then you run this system, and you can go 55 miles or 60 miles at the same speed, same weight, same condition, same wind, but you're getting, you know, 50, you're getting a 10% increase in efficiency of range, I don't know anyone that wouldn't be happy with that. And then if I make this larger, and it allows me to have a greater, even a greater efficiency, I also don't know of anyone that would be unhappy with that either. So uh, it's really important to stop bullying people and stop becoming a bully without even realizing it by just making fun of people that are experimenting, by making fun of people that are trying something new, by making fun of people that are doing something different than we learned in school. Because remember, a hundred years ago, if we traveled back with today's technology to a hundred years ago, and said, and, and let's say we didn't show the technology we have, but we just said, this is what we, what you're, what we can do. This is what's going to happen. What's going to, what, this is what's possible, right? This is what's possible. We can do all these things. What do you think people would say? They might laugh at that. Even if you showed them, do you think they would relate to it? I mean, if you told them you were a time traveler and you traveled back a hundred years in time and you're showing them future of the of t a technology of the future, maybe that would be more accepting because we love time travel, right? Um, uh, but we also all love efficiency. So in place of mocking someone, poking fun at someone, joking at people, in place of that, I would say start experimenting. Know that anything is possible. Ask yourself, how can you change something that exists already in a small way to make it more efficient? And don't forget what John Wheeler and... In, in, and uh, Richard Feynman said, 
Richard Feynman is a Nobel Prize winner and taught at Caltech Pasadena. John Wheeler was a professor at Princeton. We're talking about people that are extremely knowledgeable, right? And then people make fun of that too. People can make fun of anything. But I'm gonna, my request, my wholehearted request is do the experiment. Even if you completely don't believe in free energy at all, just start experimenting. Just start making things. Just start seeing what's possible. Isn't that more fun? I mean, to me, it's more fun. Maybe some people enjoy putting others down, but where does that lead us? I think everyone wants to be a part of a community. And how productive is a community of people that just pick on people? Does that really do anything? Is that really what we want? It might be easy to do that. Some people say it's built into us to, to poke fun at people and to make fun of people and to make fun of things. But people say there's always truth in a joke. And it's not nice to joke around with people. I mean, some people that do experiments are not sensitive and don't really care what people say. And maybe they'll just curse back at them and they'll, they'll be like a cursing match or they'll go back and forth. But how productive is that? If someone's sharing their experiment with you, what does it really do? What, what kind of conversation is it when one person's making, telling someone, you know, they're kind of attacking them and putting them down and saying, you probably never went to school or you never took a science class. What does that really do? We live in a world of not just infinite possibility. I mean, we live in a universe. This, this, universe, this world exists in a universe of not only infinite, in, infinite possibility, but infinite inevitability. Now, if you read a lot, 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 you will learn that. And we're talking about, I don't know if your science class is gonna teach you that, but I'm talking about the greatest scientific minds in the history of this planet that are documented have said that we live in an infinite inevitability universe. Given enough time, anything's possible. So what do we choose to do with our time? How do we allow imagination to be the time traveler, to crunch time, to fold time and space? When we focus on something, you ever heard of the resonant morphic field of infinite intelligence? It's called many, many different things. Everything's connected. All the knowledge in all time is available to everyone. My experience is that when we focus on something, things are gonna happen in your project that you didn't see coming. It happens all the time. How do you think we're moving so quickly into the future? How do you think we're creating the future so fast, right? Now that scares a lot of people because they're, they're saying, oh, but we already have tech that would destroy the planet and we haven't figured out how to stop fighting. So uh, we shouldn't have tech. We shouldn't go any further. We shouldn't go any further. But here's the thing. Tech's already being used as weapons. What Tom Bearden was saying was, how do we use tech to help the world and not destroy each other and the world? So it's not about not using tech, it's about using it in a peaceful way that doesn't hurt each other. So what we really need is a philosophy. We have to have a philosophy of community, of how to work together, how to collaborate. That's why it's so important to not, to not be a maker of destruction, right? Which a, a maker of disconnect, right? Disconnect, disconnect, disconnect. How about connect, connect, connect? Connecting, connecting, connecting everything, connecting information, connecting the, the different points of view, the different perspectives. How do we see things together? Very important, very important. Now I'm saying all this because I just watched this guy get attacked by a bunch of people that, that shared this. Look at this thing. How many people you think don't share stuff? I've met a lot of people that are like, I'm not gonna share anything because I don't wanna get attacked on YouTube. And I said, well, you can turn comments off. They're like, I can. It's like they didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, you can turn comments off and still share things. You don't have to read the comments. You can still share your discoveries, you know? And that's what was shared with me. I, I was taught that. So I'm just sharing what was shared with me. Let's look at this generator here. Let's look at this energy pump. So, so we talked about how, yeah, so you're invited. We're all, let's invite each other to the community of creation, right? Let's invite each other. Let's do it. Let's make stuff. Let's make things together. I'm telling you, infinite possibilities. That's where we live. Let's make stuff. Okay. So, uh, yeah, anti-gravity. Uh, you can call it whatever you want to call it. I'm just using those words, like free energy. You know, people are like, why do you call it free energy? Well, because we know what that is. It just means efficient energy. That's all it means. Um... 
Anti-gravity, we're talking about levitating, right? Levitating off the ground. That's anti-gravity. You can call it a lot of things. Levity, all these different words. There's a lot of words for it. This guy had an anti-gravity system, and he's like, that's not anti-gravity. Anti-gravity is something else. I don't care what it's called. <laughs> I want my scooter to levitate. I want to ride it around uh, four inches off the ground. I think that'd be fun. And that can be done. It's been done. It's being done. And we have to do it ourselves if we want it. We have to make it ourselves. Right? Because who knows when it'll be brought out to the public. I think it's brought out when we make it. When enough people make it at home and then then people start will bring it out to the public. I think that's how it, that's how it works. Because we have to ask for things and we don't know things are possible till we see it, right? Until we experience it. So if we make it, we know it works because we made it. That's why we gotta make it. So what's happening here? We're pulsing this coil at north and south at the same time. North on one side, south on the other side, right? These wires are the outputs. On this light, one wire goes to the light, and the other wire goes to the frame. And on the light itself, see, this is, this is the one that goes to the frame. This was the, probably the negative. I don't know if it's the negative or positive, but we'll call it the negative. <clears throat> this one, this is the ground, I think. And I think this is the positive. See the one wire right there? Just one wire coming out of this. And I don't know if they're, if it, they're calling it a positive or negative. I don't see a, a marking on there. But if it didn't work one way, I would just switch the, the wires, right? So one wire went to this, and one wire went to that. And this thing came out of the back, out of here. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I can do this with one hand, but oh, it went like this. It was like that, that's how this was. See that space, how it moves, like that? So it was spring-loaded, that spring was, was twisted, so it made it wanna go like this, and then you push it against the wheel like that, and then it would push against the wheel real hard, and the spring would be holding it against the wheel with a spring action. And then this part was a spa was a protector, or insulator, I guess we can call it. This little piece was an insulator that covered the that metal, so that that would not uh, probably touch this, right, and short out. We want all the energy to flow into the wires and then one of those wires is insulated and one's not. See this one? My guess is that this one went to the body of the scooter and this one went to the to this plug here, the one that's insulated, that's by itself. And I'm guessing this one went to the scooter, or I mean the bicycle, whatever you're connecting it to, right? So, so if we take this idea, now I'm gonna share something with you because, let me share something with you. We're gonna look at some old notes here. Very, very excited to be able to share this with you. Um, let's look at this here. This is a, uh, um, John Benini called this a G field generator. This is also a battery charger though. This can charge batteries. And um, these are just notes. This is supposed to be something that can, has something to do with the spaceship. Let's put that aside for a moment though. I mean, isn't that exciting? I don't know. I mean, someday we'll know what that means. I don't know what it means now. Uh, but let's just look what's happening here in comparing it to, to this, okay? Because I, I see a relationship. Remember, it's always about connecting information, right? Again, if we're busy uh, poking fun at people that are trying to learn new things, uh, then we're not, contributing to creativity, making things, improving things, inventing, and creation, right? What's happening here? We're pulsing one side of the coil with plus and one side with minus. One side with north, one side with south. Then one side with south, one side with north. So this is getting north, south, north, south, north, south. North, south, north, south, north, south. It's getting pulsed. It's pulsing this coil on two different sides, right? I'm also going to open this up at some point and see how they wound it. But it may just be wound regularly, like just wound, you know. It may not be wound in a special way, but it also may be wound in a special way. I'm going to look at that. My guess at the moment is that it's probably just wound. Just It's just wound, right? I'm just reading my notes here. 
asymmetrical regaging, non-equilibrium system. Thought experiment. 27 to 100 times the speed of light. That's what this is doing, but let's just, let, let's put that aside at the moment. And I'm just looking at the similarity between this and this. Isn't this wonderful that we have this tech in our hands? Everyone says this too. They always say, the great experimenters always say, what do you have at home right now that you can make something with and not even know it, right? And just start experimenting. People stumble upon anti-gravity and free energy every single day. And most of the time people want to sell things and they do which is wonderful for them. But uh, I think the big movement right now, and, and I wholeheartedly invite everyone to do this. I know, I know everyone's already doing it, but I, I, I want to encourage that you continue to, uh, to be inspired by sharing and connecting with others in an open forum, right? Open way so everybody can see. You can turn the comments off, right? And just share the experience like I'm doing. Um, so here we have a south... So here's a coil, right? Here we have a south and a north. So this thing spins, right? And it crosses the path of a north and a south. So the coil is getting pulsed from two different polarities at the same time. But the difference with this one is, and it has one additional thing, right? Because that looks like this to me. This top part looks just like this. We have a coil. This is one continuous coil. For this to work, this shaft has to not be a ferrous metal. If it's a ferrous metal, which most people were doing, more than 90% of the people that made, replicated this were make, putting a ferrous metal, which is a magnet will stick to it. It changes the direction of the flux fields, if I understand correctly, and it doesn't let this work correctly. It does not work if that's a ferrous metal. It has to be like aluminum or, or copper, I guess, or some kind of metal that, that a magnet cannot interact with that will not redirect the flux fields, right? So that's very important for this if anyone wants to replicate that thing. These are just brushes, brushes touch this. This is where you get the, the output right here. See, because this thing's spinning, so you have to have a way of getting the energy out of there, right? So you have these, a, a, a north and a south. These are the magnets right here, right? So one side's south, one side's north. These are a bunch of magnets stacked on top of each other. And then this side is, is flipped over, so it's north on top, south on the bottom. These are all magnets right here, right? And then these bars are a ferrous metal, okay? That means a magnet can stick to those, and this bar as well. This bar must be a magnet cannot stick to it. So aluminum or any metal that a magnet cannot stick to, right? Probably like brass, copper, things like that. But probably something strong, so probably aluminum would be a good choice. Um, that's for making this one though, but I'm just comparing right now with this, right? Because how am I gonna make that? I don't know at the moment, I don't actually know. But I'm looking at this. This is a bicycle generator, everyone. I bought this for $20 used, right? And new, you can find them for $10. I sell them on Amazon for $10, $11. But this was a bell, and I thought, let me try that one. Let me, see, let me go with that, the bell and see what that looks like. So, uh, so here, we talked earlier about how when I put the, the, the rotor in there, inside here, which does not go in here it does not go in that space in there that space is left open it's the rotor stops in front of this at the face of that the magnet stops there the magnet and the rotor stop there so it's just kind of floating there right there's no there's no support for that magnet it just spins in this the only support is on this side that's why it's not really made to, to probably to spin very fast i want one that spins like a hundred thousand rpms right i want one that spins super fast so that means the bearing on this side has to be very durable and strong. So uh, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, I see here the same coil. I see a coil being pulsed with a north and a south at the same time. But in addition to that, see the wire come down? Then this coil is pulsed at the opposite of the top coil. The opposite. Because now it has a south here and a north over here. So this coil is getting opposites from each side. And then this side gets opposites from each side. And then those two coils are connected together here. And then they, the output is here. And there we can charge our batteries. I mean, that's, that's the way I'm looking at it. 
I guess this would be like a battery rejuvenator, a battery charger. Now a system like this, I don't think we can measure the current coming out of it. But the pulse that it makes, that pulse, and I think we can call it an impulse, I think that's the appropriate word. I think this could be possibly impulse too, or close to it, right? I think it is though. It's half, it's half of this. Uh, it, it has this part. I wanna see what it can do though. But uh, could I easily make something, could I make this do, how could I make this do what this is doing, right? Let me think about that for a minute. I'm starting to wonder if I just had two of these and I wired them in series. Let me think about this. Because these are wired in series, right? North, south. If I have another one of these, I think that would work. I could use two of these wire in series, which is this connects. I would have to try it both ways. I'd have to connect this to the same wire like this. Right, if I have two of these, the same wire that looks just like this, the one that doesn't have any coating on it, and then try it connected to the other wire. And then the other test that I'd have to do is the polarity. So these two would have to spin exactly, if I had, if I had two of these, they'd have to spin at exactly the same time, like the magnets would have to be hitting the north, right? I, I think there's something to that, like they'd have to be in sync with each other somehow. Um... Because that's related. It's related to how this works. If I just spun two of these randomly, though, it might still be significant. It might still help for what I'm doing. All right, I'm just trying to charge a battery. This is supposed to be have something to do with powering a spaceship. That's what John Bedini said. And the man, the gentleman that taught him, one of his teachers, said that to him. He said, this is from a spaceship. Because uh, we have spaceships. Everyone says that, you know. I think the president of Lockheed Martin said we can take E.T. home. A long time ago, he said that. Uh, he said we can take E.T. home, you know? Meaning we can go, we can go anywhere. And that's, uh, you can watch David Adair of the other space, Area 51 and the other space program, if you look that up. Because there's a bunch of David Adairs on the, on the internet. Look up David Adair as it relates to, um, I think he's on Tesla Tech. I think he's been interviewed with the Tesla Tech. Uh, I don't know if that's a paid interview, you have to pay to see it, or if you have to join Tesla Tech to see him, but David Adair is a man of great knowledge, and uh, he talks about spaceships and things like that, symbiotic spaceships and things. Remember, just don't forget, UFOs are just cars, like ours, like we have, in like a million years ahead of us, or hundreds of thousands of years, both. There's there, there's all different ages. We have intelligent life of, of millions of years ahead of us, and even billions of years ahead of us, okay? So um, if they're coming here and like doing probing and doing all that stuff, they're obviously treating us like cattle and don't feel that we can be communicated with or something. I don't know. I mean, if you look at the way we behave, we destroy each other. And a lot of the alien movies we have are just them attacking us. Uh, wouldn't it be interesting to see an alien movie where we're actually communicating and they're teaching us stuff? I think that'd be fun to see a movie like that. But we keep seeing these movies where the aliens are evil and all this stuff. It's like, if they were evil and they wanted to hurt us, they could just... I mean, we have the ability to destroy ourselves in this time that we're in now. Aliens, which are just, you know, advanced intelligent life forms far beyond us. Both sides. I'm sure there's some that are less developed than us, too. But I'm talking about the ones that are more developed than us right now. That are traveling across space. Uh, the whole thing about joking about aliens and making them all evil, I, that's just boring to me. It's so boring. It's just absolutely boring. I don't think it's exciting at all. What's exciting is learning, exploring space, thinking about things, thinking about possibilities, building more efficient battery chargers, building a faster way to charge a, 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 a battery without damaging it, like G batteries achieved. Um, just doing things more efficiently. Efficiency is very interesting to me. And a healthy life, right? Healthy life, long life, how long can we live? Aubrey de Grey, right? Reversing aging. Remember, anything is possible, right? Anything is possible. And it's our job to be responsible with those possibilities, right? Uh, so anyway, this is my thoughts right now. We're at 34 minutes and 32 seconds into this video. And I'm just excited to share with you what I'm thinking about in relation to this free energy generator. Because I do think there's something that could be done with this. And if it's not already a free energy generator, I think it's close to being one. But I want to see what this can do as it is just right here. But I also think that if we just go out and buy 
a light generator to power a light. I think that they're all going to be designed differently. This is a bell, so if you like this design, you like what you see, uh, I've seen them on eBay, and they're for sale on different places on the internet. This is by Bell, B-E-L-L. -L. I don't have the packaging. Oh, but you can see the light that came in. This is the thing that came with it, right? Here's the paperwork that came with it. Bell, bicycle generated light system. I'm trying to get this to focus. Red rear tail light for visibility, six volt generator with, with rim drive, rubber cap, super bright, Krypton bulb with removable lens protector. Installation instructions. Here it is, everyone. See how it's made to work? And this has a spring loaded, so it's pushing against the tire. So this, if you want to get this exact same one, I'm just showing you what it is. <clears throat> so here's what came with it. Here's the light has one wire which tells me that this is probably the ground so here's one wire and this is probably the ground right one way or the other this is this is considered a wire and this is considered a wire so if the connection's not clean it probably wouldn't work this too see this just has one wire in it so this is one wa considered one wire which is a wire and this is probably the other connection it's the ground so if there's paint there or something it probably won't work right you have to clean that off and here's some more attachment things more things uh, I think let me see let's see what this is I don't know what this is in here I haven't opened this yet let's see what this is uh, I don't know what this is that might just be a mistakenly given to me I don't think this came with it I think he g included this the gentleman I purchased this from I think he included this I didn't even know I had that I don't know if that comes with it or not Okay, everyone, True Zero Emissions here signing off, and uh, here's some more mounting materials. But remember, let's make stuff together. Let's help each other. You know, making fun of people, being a bully, being an internet bully, picking on people. Um, I'm not trying to pick on you when I say internet bully. I'm just saying that why make people feel bad? Let's make stuff together. Remember in school, the smart kid with the glasses always got kicked on and kicked and pick, put, kicked me on the back of his shirt? And then he grows up and he's like, you know so smart he's a genius and he's getting like you know scholarships and he's working at at uh he's now a teacher like mit and caltech and and working at nasa and jpl building rocket ships and stuff and these guys when they were kids they got picked on like crazy just like skinny little bony kids and that are picked on i mean what if we all work together and say let's make something together let's be friends let's you know friendship is collaboration you know, it's like when I read in a friendship book a long time ago, it said there are no strangers, just friends that we've not yet met, right? Now, sure, we can say that's very optimistic and we can't be friends with everyone. I understand that. But we certainly don't have to put people down. And we don't have to say anything. Remember the don't say anything if you can't say something nice? Remember that? But why not say something nice? Why not build with each other? Why not find ways to make things together? Why not do that? It's just more productive. And when are we going to start getting some alien movies where they're not just destroying us and destroying each other all the time? Right? I mean, there's infinite possibilities of what does it look like when we communicate with intelligent life that's a billion years more advanced than us? A billion years more advanced than us. And they're not coming here because they're dying and they need help. They're coming here because we're dying and we need help. <laughs> and we don't even know it. <laughs> or we don't care. How many people have said, oh, the world won't even be here in a, in a hundred years. Who cares? You ever heard that one? You, is that a voice in your own head? I'm not surprised because we can feel that way pretty easily, right? It's not hard to feel that way when, when the messages are making us are kind of feeding that right it's feeding that fear maybe or create or trying to create that fear but how about if we see things in an optimistic way what can we make together what can we how can we work together how can we make things how can we improve efficiency of everything remember anything you set your mind to you can achieve what do you want to think about right oh i can't control my thoughts i'm overwhelmed with negative thoughts ptsd all these things well we all have to heal in our own ways but I think there's a great gift 
of when we work together, collaborate, and are supportive to one another, that can be very healing. So let's heal together. Let's make things. True Zero Emission signing off. See you next time. Bye, everyone.